So this is a 17 inch MacBook Pro from 2007. It's actually one of the first computers I featured on this channel. I got it for like 10 bucks at an auction and these early Intel MacBooks are quite cheap and unwanted here where I live so I've gotten quite a few of them over the years because I just can't turn them down for like 5 to 10 bucks. And these machines are very special to me because when I was a young lad in school I actually had one. It was a 15 inch model. You can see me here playing Super Mario War with my buddies. My only laptop before this was a G3 iBook and the MacBook Pro was an enormous upgrade even though it was already a couple of years old when I inherited it from my dad and I loved it. I used it for school, I've learned how to edit my first videos on it and me and my friends spend a ton of hours playing Mario Kart and many other games on it. The only issue I seem to remember with it was that it got kind of banged up and a lot of these MacBooks are all dented to hell just because of the way they're built. Also the fan got kind of loud which is par for the course for these MacBooks. The 15 inch model I featured in my previous video developed the exact same issue after a few hours of use when I was filming that episode. Anyway, a couple of months ago I've decided to give this notebook some love because there was a specific thing I wanted to use it for and that's band practice. I actually use GarageBand for my practice sessions. I like to play with headphones on since I don't want to disturb my neighbors and it makes it very convenient if you want to play with like a backing track. I also use it for band practice on occasion and since GarageBand runs very well on this I don't want to lug around my modern everyday notebook just because I don't want to bang it up, spill beer on it or whatever. So in a previous episode I've installed an SSD on it, changed out the thermal paste, cleaned it out and installed a fresh operating system. And it had served me well ever since, I had no problems with it whatsoever. But recently after doing the video on the Intel transition, I've been wondering how far could you push these early Intel systems because they are after all running a Core 2 Duo processor which at this point is almost 20 years old. This system is also sporting a maximum of 4GB of DDR2 RAM and a 256MB graphics chip which yeah even with the SSD upgrade there's only so far you can take this thing you know. This was actually one of the first MacBook Pro models, this line of portables was introduced in 2006 and it replaced the PowerPC PowerBook line of notebooks, specifically the PowerBook G4. Again, see my video on the Intel switch, but suffice it to say that the jump from the G4's chip to Intel was pretty substantial, but how well does that architecture hold up today? I also recently done a video experiment with my 2011 Mac Mini and I also got it for like 10 bucks where I tried editing a video on it. But not only is that machine like 5 years newer, it also has a newer generation of processor, it's an early Core i5, 16GB of DDR3 memory and it's overall a much more capable machine all around. Oh yeah, and people were also disappointed I have uploaded the video in 720p resolution and that's actually because I made a mistake, well, kind of. See, iMovie is dumb as hell. It dictates the maximum resolution of the entire project based on the first clip you import into the timeline and it just so happened that the first clip was a lower resolution one. So that machine was perfectly capable of editing 1080p footage but by the time I realized what I've done the video had already been up for days. But that got me wondering about some other Mac models, particularly the older ones. Could they be used for light video editing? And apart from just being curious, I also wanted to do videos like this to encourage people not to feel bummed out if they don't have top of the line computers. See, people nowadays see creators using all these fancy setups, especially newer Apple computers, and they feel discouraged because they can't afford it and they think a setup like that is necessary for producing the kind of content they put out. And while a good fast computer makes your life easier, especially when editing 4K or ProRes footage, if you're just starting out, chances are whatever computer you're using is going to be just fine. I'm not saying you're going to have a great experience using a MacBook from 2007, this is more of a proof of concept, but if you have like a 5 to 10 year old computer and you'd like to try making some videos, it's likely that you're more than well equipped to, you know, at least get acquainted with basic video editing. So it was time to try this thing out with some editing software and to put that 2.4 GHz Core 2 Duo processor to the test. But before that, a word on operating systems and software. 
Whenever I do a video on an older machine, I get flooded with comments about installing Linux or a modern Mac OS with legacy open core. And yes, I will do a video on both of those things, but there are a couple of issues with both of them in this case. First, I'm not an expert on installing and using Linux. I had it pre-installed with a couple of notebooks I've gotten over the years, and I used them for a couple of hours, even on some MacBooks. But the thing is, for what I'm looking to do with this video, I need to have software I know how to use, namely GarageBand and iMovie, but those applications are just not available on Linux. And while I'm sure I could find some other comparable software, I do think, for example, DaVinci Resolve is available for Linux, I just didn't want to mess with it for this experiment. As far as using legacy open core, I did try it with some of my older Macs, and again, video on that thing is coming, but in my experience, the potential benefit you get with being able to install a more up-to-date operating system isn't really worth it, because the older machines are just not meant to run the newest or even up-to-date operating systems, and I've unfortunately run into many instability issues I'll discuss in a future video. So this antique is running macOS El Capitan, which at this point is a 10-year-old operating system. Sweet Jesus, it's as if I can remember the time when I was proudly installing this thing on Macs I used to refurbish. X. Anyway, even though it's old, it's surprisingly serviceable, and you might think there's no way you're able to efficiently use this thing with, you know, apps you might use every day, like a web browser, video editor, Microsoft Office, etc. But I found that using older unsupported versions of Firefox or Chrome, iMovie, Microsoft Office 2016, those actually run better and smoother than trying to run modern versions of those apps through OpenCore. So yeah, I just went with GarageBand 10.2.0, iMovie 10.1.6, Firefox 70.0b7, and Microsoft Word 2016, which I mean, as far as I'm concerned, works as well as my 2023 version. Can't really tell the difference, to be honest. I've actually used it to write the script to this video, and I gotta say, I really miss typing on this keyboard. It really does feel nice. It has a nice long travel, and honestly, in my opinion, it beats modern Apple keyboards. And I don't just mean butterfly mechanisms, that goes without saying, but there's something about them that makes me like them even more than the redesigned keyboards. Afterwards, it was time to offload the videos from my iPhone to this old Mac, and even though the support for these newer iOS devices isn't very good on these ancient systems, my iPhone 15 Pro Max actually showed up just fine when hooked up with a USB-C to USB-A cable. I was able to use the Photos app to access all my photos and videos and import them into my photos library, but I did have to shoot them in 1080p at 30fps with no HDR encoding, since that's only available on High Sierra and newer Macs. And yeah, in my last video people complained about the horrible 720p quality, and yes, by today's standards that quality just doesn't fly, but I do stand by my words, as I really think that on like a 6 inch screen of your phone, 720p really doesn't look that bad. It's only when you scale up to the bigger monitors that the quality really starts to look muddy and soft. I don't know, maybe it's just me, I still remember the pre 1080p YouTube and watching that crap in 480p on my iPhone 3GS. I mean, it looked freaking stellar, it looked like the future and I'm not even kidding. Man, I'm getting old. But if you've been paying close attention, yeah, this ain't 480p, nor is it 720p, no sir, this is crisp 1080p footage you're seeing here. Now mind you, I usually shoot my videos in 4K, 60fps, HDR encoding and all that good stuff, and I had to crank down the settings for this particular video to make it, you know, doable. And yeah, let me tell you, editing 720p footage honestly felt smooth as butter, and I was really tempted to just edit it that way, but I wanted to push this thing, and let's just say it wasn't very happy about it. For one thing, just scrubbing through the footage felt glitchy, and it felt like it was taking up a lot of system resources just to chew through that footage. Adding effects and transitions as well as the voiceover also took a lot longer, but man, the rendering times, I mean, holy freaking nuts. Rendering this project took like 8 hours to finish, and upon seeing how long it would take, I just left it there to cook overnight. This is a part of that footage, and it took around 45 minutes per a minute of video. But usually after I'm done exporting my projects, I like to watch them a couple of times to look for mistakes and stuffs. And I end up, you know, tweaking a couple of things and then rendering it and exporting again, which takes, you know, minutes on my modern machines, even for bigger projects. 
So I had to be extra careful here and make sure everything was lined up because I wasn't going to wait for this freaking thing to finish rendering this eight hour project the second time. And luckily it turned out, you know, all right, I didn't have to redo it. And I've also used Canva to edit my thumbnail for this video, not sponsored. <laughs> it's just what I use and it worked without a hitch. After it was all done, I've used my outdated browser to upload it to YouTube. And yeah, all in all, I was mighty impressed that I've managed to pull all that off using an adult 18 year old machine I've used as a teen. And the biggest takeaway for me is patience. You can do a lot of things with these old fellas, but you have to have more patience, which is one thing that people, myself included, are lacking nowadays. People are willing to upgrade computers that are just a couple of years old just to get a system that will speed up their workflow a fraction of a percent at a time because that all ends up to a smoother experience and more work done, which in turn makes their lives easier and makes them more money. But I've also heard people using that as an excuse, like, oh, if only I had a computer that's, I don't know, three years newer, or it had more RAM or space, or if it had a faster processor or whatever, I'd be able to make videos or something. What I'd like is if there's anybody out there with that mindset watching this video and thinking that your equipment or computer gear is holding you back from achieving whatever you're trying to accomplish, let this be a reminder that no matter how much your setup sucks or you think it sucks, it's likely just your attitude that's holding you back. Get out there, push that old hardware, make it do what you want to do, make it work for you, at least until you can afford an upgrade. I don't think there are too many people daily driving anything older and less powerful than this 10 bucks Apple notebook from 2007, so I've set the bar pretty low. This was quite a fun challenge and if you'd like to see me pushing some more old hardware, there are plenty of videos about that on my channel, so feel free to check them out. You might even want to consider subscribing. I do videos like this two times a week, retrospectives, reviews, repairs and other tech related stuff. If you'd like to support what I do and get early access to my videos, you can join my Patreon for just one buck a month or more if you'd like. You can also join our Discord server to chat with me and other people. I share some behind the scenes stuff there when I have the time. You'll find all the links in the end screen of this video as well as in the description. Also, what experiences did you have with these older MacBooks? Do you still by any chance use one to this day? What for? Let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what you think about this series. Which computer should I use to edit my videos next? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Cheers.